Father, I thank you that my tongue will be as a pen of a ready writer today. Help me to speak those things that you put in my heart this week. Help me to have a laser focus on the things that you've spoken to me, the things that I haven't heard before, things that I'm seeing. Help me to, to speak them with clarity. Thank you, Father. Turn your Bibles to 1 Timothy chapter 3. I want kind of get started back in the, the mysteries of the, of the scriptures. But uh, the Lord just kept me here on the mystery of godliness. 1 Timothy chapter 3. speaks is always a law. New Testament, Old Testament is always, it's a law, a principle that works. <clears throat> Here in 1 Timothy chapter 3, Paul is talking to Timothy here, it's the epistle to, to Timothy, and he says, without controversy, in verse 16, in other words, there's no argument on either side of the fence. There's no argument among the Gentiles, the Jews. There's no argument. <clears throat> Great is the mystery of godliness. Without controversy, without any argument, without any debate. Great is the mystery of godliness. Now, I just grew up thinking godliness was living right. And that, that's a truth, too. That's an element of truth. Just living right and living for God. But there's, there's something so much deeper than that. Paul understood it. Matter of fact, the mystery of the gospel was Christ in you, the what? The hope of glory. Paul understood that. But in the churches, they, it was a great mystery of what godliness was all about. And we'll find what that law is if we go to Genesis chapter 1. I just want to kind of rehash some things that I shared last week <clears throat> that we need to really understand. In verse 26 of Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Oh, no. There it is. Right there. And God said, Let us make man in what? In our image, after our likeness, and let them. Let's say it together. Let them. Come on, let's all participate. Let's all say it together. Let them. That's the law. Let them have dominion. He didn't say us together. He said let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over all the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And God created man in his own image, and in him in the image of God created he him male and female created he them now remember the man had not been created yet God set a law in motion let them have dominion I'll say it again let them I'll say it again let, let them, them. So one more time let, let them. them okay now as we mentioned last Sunday when Eve Listen to Satan. When she 
listened to the serpent, why didn't God stop her? He could have, he could have solved a lot of world's problems if he'd have stopped her. Creation wouldn't be in the mess it's in today had God stopped her. Do you think since God is all powerful, He hears everything, knows everything, and all of that, couldn't He have stopped her? He had the power to, but He didn't have the authority to. Because He said, Let them have dominion. He said that and spoke that in existence before He ever created man before he created Adam and Eve. So when Eve was talking to the serpent back and forth, I believe God heard it. I'm going to slow this morning. I want you to catch this. It will help you to understand a lot about Christ. See, a lot of people are still serving Jesus. Let that soak in. We'll get to that in a minute. Talk a little more about that in a minute. God could have stopped her. He had the power, but he already set a long motion. Let them have dominion. God actually took himself out of the equation. I think about this when he said let them. When he made the human race. Now I shared with you last Sunday, the word human comes from two words. Humus and man. Humus means uh, dirt, ground, earth so God made man made a spirit and put it in clothed it with a dirt body got that so far he made man and he put it in an, an earth body an earth suit he called it he breathed into it and called it a living soul this was really the spirit of man. Now, I shared with you last Sunday a statement that John Wesley uh, made. He said, it seems to me, and I think he was tapping in on some of this. He said, it seems to me without God, man cannot. We can agree with that. Without God, man cannot. But he said, without man, God will not. Without man, God will not. There must be a partnership between heaven and earth for these things to change in the earth. The most powerful creation in all the earth is you. The most powerful creation in all the earth is you. You are a spirit. You don't have a spirit. You are a spirit. Let's say it together. I am a spirit. I am a spirit. All right. That sounds good. I don't just have a spirit. I am a spirit. In the mind of God, before he made mankind, he said, let them have dominion over all the earth. Now, let me say this. Anything, think about this. Anything without a dirt body is illegal in the earth. Matter of fact, you're illegal in the earth when your body dies. You can't stay here. When your body dies, you're illegal in the earth. But as long as you've got a body, that dirt man, as long as you got that, it'll hold you here in Terra Firma. Okay? And if you don't understand this truth, you will not understand the incarnation. The whole thing about how, how God got into the earth. And we'll talk about that a little bit. But any time there, you're the most powerful creation in the earth. Any time God does something in the earth, he has to use a man. Now, I'm not taking away from the all-powerful, almighty God, the sovereign God, and all of that. I, I'm not taking away from that. But I think we've lost, or maybe never knew, maybe what this is all this fast is about for me, was learning how powerful we are in the earth. Let me say it another way. I've been praying for things to happen. And 
you know, sometimes I quote scripture, sometimes I make confessions of faith, and I still don't see a lot of things change. Because I had never learned that we have dominion. I'm, wanting, I'm praying for God to come and do something. Paul, all the time, way back in Genesis, he said, let them. Let them have dominion over... He named all the things he said over all the earth. Let them. So I, I reflected back when, uh, how in the last two and a half, three years, I've been able to stop a storm when I'm driving. And it's, it took me six months to go into that. Six months I'd pray, and sometimes it would happen, sometimes it wouldn't. But what really helped me to, you know, I'd, I'd, you know, I'd say, Lord, I think this storm's going to stop. It will quit raining when I get to wherever I'm going. And then I'd start praying in tongues the whole trip. About six months into that, Robin, the Lord spoke to me and said, when are you going to trust me? Now, I'm, I'm all for praying in tongues. I think that's wonderful. I do that every day. He said, when are you going to trust me? So I just say, Lord, I think this the storm will stop. The farmers probably need the rain. It's good for the pasture. It's good for the corn. It's good for the wheat. It's good for everything that they planted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when I get to Camden Town, it will stop. And I wouldn't pray no more. I wouldn't, I wouldn't pray in tongues. Not against praying in tongues. But I started making a proclamation. And John, when I get to Camden Town, it'd be corn so hard. I'd pull in there, I want to say, oh, I want to go pray, start praying in tongues. I'd back into the dock, and we have back in, before we get to the dock, about 10 foot, we'll run back there and take our padlock off. Because it's easier to do stand on the ground than it is inside the, the building. And I set the air on my truck, and put my, take my, my clipboard out, and I write my mileage down, and it quits raining. Run back, get my padlock. Run inside, take off seven pallets, or whatever, just take off. Come back out, get back in my truck, put the seal on, back my truck and take off before I pull out of the pit to train again. Now, I, I'll tell Tim McDowell, he's not here today, but I'll tell him about that. He, he said, I'm going to try that. <laughs> and that's okay. you got to develop to it. So, I believe we need to develop into the fact that we know that God has said we have dominion over the earth. We have dominion over the earth. And I'm, I believe the Bible says pray without ceasing. And I believe the Bible is very clear about pray always. Different kinds of prayer. I believe in all of that. But where certain things are concerned, we start, ought to probably start making proclamations. Because we have dominion. We have the authority in the earth. So God chose to take himself out of the equation so that it's, it's a dirt body with a spirit inside it that has dominion. You know that's why demons in the past wanted to get involved in people so they'd have a body to work with. Think of that. You know, all through the Old Testament, nowhere in the Old Testament you ever could find that the Holy Spirit dwelt in anybody. It moved on people to do certain jobs and then lift it. So, nowhere in the Old Testament was it ever found anybody the Holy Spirit ever lived in anybody. I wonder why that is. Because man had been contaminated. God needs humans to interfere in the earth in our situation. That's how powerful you are. That's how powerful you are. In Genesis chapter 3, after Eve had partaken of the fruit, given to Adam, and the whole human race, let me say it this way, collapsed. As far as the power of God was concerned, 
in Genesis chapter 3, God spoke to Satan and said, I'm going to use the very same species that you used. I'm going to use that same species to crush your head. And you know what? We still don't think that the head of Satan is crushed. Now, you that have been here for 14, 15 years, you know this answer, so don't, don't speak up. But for you that haven't been here that long, I've taught you what, uh, who was the guy that we had? Uh, Carla, who's a great big guy that we had to speak at Faith Tabernacle. And I think we had him at Joyful Sound one time. Uh, Chuck Flynn. Chuck Flynn. Now, Chuck Flynn is, is an intellectual minister, and I don't know, he had to be pretty smart to speak and teach classes in the University of Jerusalem, which he did. We said in Hebrew, when we clap our hands, that's a sign that Satan is smitten. How many times do we clap our hands in song and go outside and we're still worried about this and that and something else happening? We haven't, we haven't really gotten it down in our spirit that Satan is smitten when, when God said, there's going to be a woman that I'm going to use and she's going to, I'm going to use her and through her, I'm going to crush your head. I don't think we've learned that yet. I'm, I don't know that I have. I'm tapping into it. I'm doing my best to get a hold of it. But I'm not so sure that I've learned that. Just down in my nose real good. In Isaiah chapter 14, did you get that? Isaiah chapter 14, verse uh, 7, chapter 7, verse 14, I'm sorry. Isaiah 7, 14. It says, Behold, therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a what? Son. son and shall call his name what? Emmanuel, which means in man you dwell. Slip over to the ninth chapter in verse 6. Isaiah chapter 9. Verse 6. Verse 6, it says, For unto you a child is born. Why didn't he stop there? But he said, Unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulders and his name shall be called what? Wonderful. What else? Yes. Counselor. What else? The mighty God. What else? Yes. The everlasting Father. What else? The Prince of Peace. You know, it just occurred to me driving down the road the other day when I've preached a lot of times on, on John 12, 31 where, where Jesus said before he went to the cross that the... the uh, um, that the, the judgment of this world has come. The prince of this world is cast out. Now, a long time ago, I looked up the word prince, and it said the number one in rulership, less God, minus God, and the first in order. Well, once Adam and Eve caused the creation to collapse before the power and authority of God, Satan became the ruler. But he said, Jesus said on the way to the cross, he said, to this, now is the judgment of this world come. See, we've got preachers still preaching the judgment's coming. That's right. But it ain't. It's already been judged. Amen. It's already been judged. It's judged so much that Jesus hanging on the cross, the Bible says, the prophet said, his visage wasn't even like a man almost. Now I think the, 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 the movie uh, Passion. Passion of Christ did a good job, but I could still tell it was a man. But the Bible says that his visage was just almost been recognized. That was my sin, your sin. Any kind of sin you want to name, we could list all, all we could think of and there'd be more. He took that on himself. The Bible says he became sin. Though he didn't sin, 
so that we could be called what? The righteousness of God. My righteousness is not based on me preaching or playing my guitar or singing or worship. My righteousness is based on what Jesus done. When we understand His righteousness, you know what? We tend to act more righteous. Amen. For unto us a child is born. And then it goes on to say, Unto us a son is given. Don't confuse the child with the son. Let's look at that scripture up there. There's a difference, or it wouldn't be in there. For unto us a child is born, they could just go and say, The government shall be upon his shoulder. It says, Unto us a son is given as well. The child, years later, came from Mary, but the son came from the Holy Ghost. Go to Matthew chapter 1. Carl, you're doing so well, I'll try to get down by 1. I can let him there before you. Matthew 1. Let's look at verse uh, 20. But while he thought on these things, talking about Joseph, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not, take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived is up in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring, verse 21, and she shall bring forth a son, and shall call his name, what? Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which is spoken, by the, by, spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name, what? Emmanuel, which, which being interpreted is God with us. Now, if you look in the concordance, with, within, and with all is all, uh, it's a synonym, but we call it son. They're all, you could use them all. All right. So, being interpreted, God within us. Right. Um, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son. Again, don't confuse a child with the son. There's two different things I want to bring out here before we close. Go to Galatians chapter four, verse. I hope when we get through this message, it's you. When you start praying for situations, you'll start making proclamations because you have the meaning. Galatians chapter 4, verse 4. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his Son. It's not by happenstance that. The Apostle Paul said, made of a woman. That just wasn't put in there to take up space. When the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman. Remember, it was a woman back in Genesis, Genesis that began to commune with the serpent and gave the fruit to her husband. So, God, in his pattern, use the same species to get himself back in the earth. Because when he said, let them have dominion, they had all of the authority. What happened, you ever remember reading in the New Testament, it says, Jesus, the Christ, I seen on the back of some trucks, it's, and there must be Christian owners, they'll say, uh, Christ is not his last name. Jesus was a dirt man. Christ was what was from the Holy Ghost. The dirt man died on the cross, but Christ liveth forever. That spirit lives forever. So, Jesus is what made Christ legal in the earth. 
Jesus was 100% man and 100% God. Is that good news? Now God entered into the world through a human. Now he has legal entry. See, God is very, does everything in a pattern. He don't, you know, if God would have stepped, let me say this. When God said, let them have dominion over there, and if God would have stepped in and corrected Eve, he would have violated his word. Because he said, let them have dominion. And if he'd have violated his word, then we could never trust him. So we could say it this way. When the whole human race collapsed, it was because God was faithful to his word. No wonder years later, David says, he exalts his word above his name. Psalm 138, I believe. He exalts his name above, or his word above his name. Now let me throw something else at you. When God wanted to judge Sodom and Gomorrah, why did he use Abraham? Think about that. In the line of what I'm preaching today. He saw the sins of Sodom and Gomorrah. He could have wiped it out. But he used a man, didn't he? Why? At that time in the Old Testament, he still didn't have legal authority. He had power. So he started talking to Abraham. Abraham said, well, if I find 50, will you say, sure. What about 40, Lord? Well, you're the boss. Uh, let's see. How about 30? You're in charge. Oh, man. How about 20? He gets down and he says, even if you find one, and when Abraham, and that's it. Guess what happened? Sodom and Gomorrah were in flames. See how important man was? Think about this. God heard the cries of the Israelites down in Egypt. But he used a man. He spoke to Moses. Moses did, Moses did a bunch of stuff, and, but he's out there tending the sheep and saw this bush on fire. Well, he consumed, and a voice come out of that bush told him to set the people free. And he did just like some of us. Well, I'm too old. Well, I'm the wrong color. Uh, I can't speak well. I mean, I'm just making these up, but that's what the excuses we use most of the time. Or I'm too young. Moses had the impediment of speech, and he said he couldn't speak well. So he tried to use that excuse. But if you notice, all through those plagues, nothing happened until Moses announced it first. You know, this class has helped me just to see things I've read over and read over and read over and read over. I mean, I just never picked it up. God used a man. He never did anything until Moses announced it. Well, what about when they left? You ever read about them crossing the Red Sea? I picked up stuff in that story I'd never seen before, Robin. I, they come to the Red Sea, and here's the army coming behind them. Did God have the power to, to open the sea? Sure he did. He just didn't have the authority. So he spoke to a man. And the man Moses, he rests forces rod and opened it. But I was reading that story again and I say that while they were in the in the sea, when the sea opened up, Pharaoh's army was in it too. I never picked that up, did he? He probably did, but I didn't get that. They were in it too. And Moses made an announcement. He says, before this is all over, every one of them is going to be dead. Fear not. He made that announcement. Fear not, every one of them that you see behind us. So when they got over on the other side, the sea was still open. It wasn't until the man turned and stretched his rod again until the sea swallowed him up. 
God always uses a man. Hallelujah. That's why he needs us. This is why he worked with you. God did nothing in Egypt until Moses announced it. Amen. Everything. Now, in 1 Timothy we read, without controversy, there's no debate, great is the mystery of godliness. Godliness is God-likeness. So what we've seen today is the mystery revealed. It's been revealed today. Joseph Center Worship Center. Christ in you, the hope of glory. <coughs> That's why John says, there's one coming after me whose shoelaces I'm not worthy to, to loosen. He'll baptize you with the what? The Holy Ghost and with fire. That's the Spirit of God that didn't come from the child. It came from the Son. So once God's in you, Bob, he has legal entry in the earth through you. Now you have have authority. He has power. He used both of them put together. You know, I'm a Christian. I'm so taken this week and last week about understanding the power of God is in us. He's given us dominion over all the earth. I really don't think it pleases God for your little girl to have arthritis. And you do what you have to do in the meantime. But I think we need to make some proclamations about Piper. I think we need to make some proclamations about Jerry and Susie's little granddaughter that's on a, on a pump for sugar diabetes at her young age. I think we need to make some proclamations about the young lady you talked about been in your home. Not just praying for her, but make some proclamations. We'll start making some announcements. And Carl will pray a good prayer this morning. I'll just use that as your announcement. There'll be a song. There'll be somebody cross her path. We proclaim that today in the name of Jesus. How can we, why do we pray the name of Jesus if he died in Christ and life today? Because he was the dirt man that made all this possible for us. That's why we pray the name of Jesus. Just as Carla was ministered to by Karen, that word took her. Oh, sir. Can I tell you what we talked about in my, my eyes? Or, no, is that okay? And we got acquainted with Carla. And uh, Parker had got acquainted with her first. <laughs> uh, I'd been back to the, our bathroom and in, in our master bedroom, and I come out and started getting out to the hall, and I met Carla. And she was crying for peace. And, uh, of course, we're talking about Parker and all that stuff. And we was excited. Really excited. And she said, uh, I'm married. Oh, yeah, okay. She said, I'm married to a woman. I said, you know, I love you right now. And I said, I don't love you any less. She laid her head on my sofa and she sobbed. I've been trying to get out of this relationship for two years. Anyway, that's all it's all taking place in. Anyway. When's that final? Wednesday. Cool. Amen. God bless you. Love you so much. She said, I need you to be on the phone with me when I tell Parker. I said, Parker, good night. Didn't I? So the next day, Sherry was in town and all the girls went to eat. I got to tag along. <laughs> and I whispered to her at the dinner when we were eating Mexican food. And I said, How, when are you going to tell Parker? She said, I told him last night. I said, what do you say? He said, it's like you said. He said, it's a big pill, but I can swallow it. 
you know, God is so faithful. God is so faithful when we just make declarations. I'm making a change. I draw this line to say, I'm making a change. I want to do things God's way. God is faithful to bring it all full circle. And he bring Taylor to full circle. Amen. And I believe we're going to see the day that Piper won't have to take those shots every week. I believe we'll see the day that Jerry and Susie can testify in church that that baby, that young girl, is not on a uh, certain diabetes, right? A diabetes problem. I think there's, we've got to come and, and develop into it. But I think there's coming a day in our spirit when we can say to people with dementia, be healed. Amen. And see their mind come back Amen. to normal. We can say, autism, you won't rule any longer. I declare it. I declare it in the name of Jesus. You have given us dominion over the earth. I'm a man. I'm a, I'm a, a human. I'm a, I'm a dirt body, but I got something inside of me that's powerful, and that's the Amen. spirit of the living God. And we can make declarations Amen. and say, autism, you won't rule. And see it come to pass. Amen. The chief priest came to Jesus, and the elders said, By what authority do you do this? heal all those people and he said but what authority do you do this and Jesus said uh, one place he said well, I'm a son of God another place he said I just do what the father says he has the power I have before. I just do what the father says he has the power I have authority Jesus identified himself by two terms one, the Son of Man, and the Son of God. Why does God want you healed? Why does God want me healed? Why does He want Piper healed? What, uh, what's Jerry and Susie's granddaughter's name? Chad, <coughs> you know? Come on, you got to know them for years. Remember. I can't remember. All right. Anyway. Why does God want us healed? He wants you well. You know what struck me this week? God wants me well, not for myself, but for Himself. Amen. So many times we want to just get well so we can go have a good time. And I'm not against you having a good time. But He wants us well because we are His temple in the earth. You are and me are who He uses in the earth. When we see somebody like Taylor, God just raises up people like Angie and, and your family to say, we had, we had to dismiss her out of our house, but that will mean we quit loving her. We believe that the power of God bring her full circle. And what the seed we sown is powerful. It's the seed of God. And she can't get drunk enough, high on drugs enough to get away from it. Amen. It'll stay with her until... Carla prays the prayer and makes that announcement. There'll be a song. There'll be somebody cross their path. Something. Because God uses it all. Amen. That's why He wants you healed. That's why He wants Piper healed. That's how come He wants Jerry to see his granddaughter healed. You are God's secret weapon in the earth. You are God's battle axe. Let me say that. But you can come against any situation. Right. Let's quit praying and just ask God to do something. Let's start making proclamations. I proclaim this or that. I proclaim. I proclaim. Join him to do that. I proclaim. Piper will not live her whole life with arthritis. Thank you, Father. I proclaim it in Jesus' name. 
I proclaim, let's even bow your hands here, we'll pray. I proclaim, I want to heal all. Jerry and Susie, your granddaughter, won't have to have that, that uh, little pump on her all the time. And I thank you, Josh, the daddy will see and understand the power of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Angie, give him, give him her old hand. Father, I just thank you. I proclaim today that Taylor, we proclaim her into the kingdom, however you want to do it and bring it past. You have the power, we have the authority. Hallelujah. We proclaim it in Jesus' name. We proclaim the whole King family, all, everybody involved, begins to walk in the power of God more than they ever have in their whole life. And Angie, I include your boys, Shannon, Jay, and Matthew. Thank you, Father. You're, you're sending people across their path. I thank you. They're going to hear a song that will bring them back to the place they once was, and even further along than that. Thank you, Father. I thank you for Deb and Destiny and Dylan. And I thank you, Lord, you brought Lisa along just to, just to close the gap. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We proclaim that. Now we look forward to seeing that happen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. John, I proclaim when you're deployment, you'll be safe. So don't you worry. I proclaim you'll be safe. No harm will come to, uh, to you. You're well because Emmanuel's in you. And he needs you in the earth. He needs your trumpet, too. I just love you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Bill, you're a tad bit older than me. But you don't have to live with back problems. So I'm going to proclaim it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Join hands with me. You too. Are so important. Don't even think about funeral services. Don't think about I'm at the end. You're just at the beginning. Amen. Age is just a number. Amen. Marie, age is just a number. Father, I just proclaim these two will live a long, long, long life. I thank you, Father. Just their long life will speak to Jack. It will speak to Jack. I thank you, Father. I proclaim her in the kingdom in a way she's never known before. And her husband, Dan, and her children. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. You're working that all out. You just need somebody to start proclaiming it. We're the, we're the men and women that do that. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. God has the power. We have the authority. Amen. We don't have it of our of our own self. He's given it to us. He's given it to us. When he said, let them have dominion, that's still working. But he took himself out of the equation until Jesus came. Then he put himself back in the equation. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Michael, I proclaim your head when you get better, but I proclaim that in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God.
gathering will be this Friday night. We have guests coming from Oklahoma City. And uh, we had two. Linda asked last week for what you decided about a menu. We had two. Um, two people. One said tacos, and the other one said salad. So I'm going to ask all of you to vote. How many for tacos? Okay. How many for salad? Tacos one. <laughs> I told you to vote, so. Taco salad. Huh? Okay, taco salad. Amen. And everybody's out. Amen. You know, this is a matter of proclaiming something. Uh, I don't know how far back, when Mike had mentioned about proclaiming to the storms, I exercised that here some time back. We had a tornado that was announced to head right straight for Harrisonville. I stepped outside on my front porch and I could see the tremendous elements headed our way. I tried to exercise what Pastor Mike did. I said, Storm, you have no right here. You have no authority. I rebuke you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and his power. The report was that he divided. It hit on the south part of Harrisonville, his distribution center, didn't it? If we can proclaim the power of God against the storms, the storm against my back. The storm against your problem, your situation. It's the same power. It's the same power. It's the same God. And you have control of it. He is instilled within you and I. That's our God. He did it for you and I. On the table out in the vestibule is a multitude of DVDs and CDs. Sometimes when I multi multitask in my office, making those, I uh, do something and I look up and I've redone it. <laughs> There's some extra discs out there, uh, a multitude of them on the table. Uh, you may want some, you may know somebody you can give some to. Would you take them? Let's see that table cleaned off. Amen. Amen. All right, and also, <clears throat> Friday night, let's try to fill this, these totes over here with the food for the, for the blood box. I appreciate you doing that. We'll do it once a month and not have to do it every Sunday. So, so bring stuff for that. No, no perishables. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Thank you. Thank you.